So inside of this pouch sits the DJI mic kit and I have been using these for 10 months. My first experience with these were when I visited Pilot Institute, we filmed the course, and just the overall simplicity and ease of use was very attractive. And as soon as I got home, like literally as soon as I got home, I ended up purchasing these. And it was my best tech purchase of 2022. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you my long-term thoughts and opinions on them. Let's get started. What's good, everybody? Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo. In today's video, we are talking about the DJI Mic Kit long-term. Like I said, I've had these for over 10 months time. I've long been a road user, and I always thought I would be a road user, but I ended up switching. Matter of fact, I bought the latest generation Rode Wireless Mic 2, like, two months before I purchased these DJI mics. Yeah, that's a whole nother story. But anyways, inside of this little sheath, this little carrying case rests the DJI mic. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what you get when you purchase these mics. So they give you this nice little carrying case, which I think is fantastic to just keep everything organized. It's small, it's compact, it throws right in my bag. So opening up the case, you're obviously going to get the charging case, which also contains the transmitters and the receiver. You get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. This can also be used for firmware updates. You get the audio cable that will go directly to your camera from your receiver into your camera. And then you get two windscreens. And the thing I love about these windscreens is the way they clip into place. I don't ever have any worry about them falling off of my transmitter, which is great. I would have probably already lost these by now if they were any different, but um, they work fantastic. So let me go ahead and put this stuff away and we'll talk about the units themselves. So they give you this nice little charging case, which works fantastic to keep your transmitters and your receiver fully charged by the time you're done with one shoot onto the next. Opening up the case, you'll be greeted by the two transmitters and the receiver. And I have to say the build quality of all of this is really super top notch. If you haven't had a chance to, you know, sort of feel this or put it in your hands, I think you'll really be surprised with the overall build quality and design of this. Looking at the transmitters, they are incredibly small and compact. I love the fact that they have these little tiny active pins at the bottom. So as soon as you put them back in the battery case, they begin charging again. The overall design of them is very simplistic. It's sort of plain and utilitarian. There's a few buttons on the side to bind and record. By the way, these do have eight gigs of onboard internal storage. So if you wanted to record directly to the transmitter, you can go ahead and do so. On the opposite side, you will find a USB-C port and a power button. However, I don't really find myself needing to use this power button very often other than turning it off if I'm going to leave the receiver outside of the charging case. As soon as you pull these units out of the charging case or open the lid, they immediately power on and they are ready for use. All right, let's take a look at the transmitter. So the transmitter for me was the selling point of this kit. Because it does have a capacitive touchscreen on the front and the LCD is so visible in just a, a very smart way because the way you mount this into the hot shoe of your camera, whether you face it forward or you have it facing backwards if you're behind the camera, you can always see the audio levels, the status and the battery. This was something that you couldn't get with the Rode system because the LCD screen was at the very top and there was no way to really mount that to where you can physically see your audio levels or the battery as well. So that was something that really was a, a selling point. Like I said, capacitive touchscreen, not needing an application to actually access these configurations to me was a game changer. To be able to do on the fly changes to my channels, to the receiver game, to the volumes, I think is a big deal. I also like the fact that I can adjust the gain for each individual transmitter on the fly. So if I'm dealing with talent that is coming in a little bit too hot, I could go ahead and adjust that gain uh, to match their, their voice and how strong of a tone their voice is. 
There's also safety channels on this, meaning that if I want it to, I can go ahead and drop this into mono safety, which means it's always going to record one of those channels at negative six. I often find myself using that mono safety channel just because if I'm in a loud situation, I'm not really 100% sure, I at least have that backup channel that I can extract in my editor and go ahead and process that audio, which I know that audio should be good most of the time. So that is something that I really found very useful. I have a few clients that one, one person is always louder than their, their business partner. And um, yeah, so safety channels work really, really well. So overall, I really do enjoy these. I also like a lot of the security features of these mics. The fact that they transmit over an encrypted feed means that you don't have to worry about anybody being able to intercept any of the conversations that you're talking about. I've never had this happen, but I guess it could happen in certain urban environments where the transmission feed could be intercepted, but because it's encrypted, that's one less thing that you really have to concern yourself with. Again, it wasn't really a thought on my mind, but it is something um, that could potentially happen. Mounting these mics are pretty straightforward and simple. Both transmitters do have a built-in microphone, and a lot of times I'm pretty lazy and I end up just using the built-in microphone when I'm doing these YouTube videos. It's just one less cable that I have to have dangling off of me, so it just works really well. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just use the windscreen and then just clip it somewhere to my shirt and call it a day. But when I'm working with agents or talent, I typically do have to use an external lavalier. And there is a port here to plug a lavalier mic into the transmitters. Now the lavalier I've been using is pretty expensive. It's the Rode lavalier and I'm not using it because the audio quality is amazing. I'm using it basically because the cord is shorter than my DD lav mic. The DD lav mic that I have been using for the past, I don't know, two years now is just, it's showing its age and the lav mic cable is incredibly long. So when you compare that to the cable that we get from the road, you can obviously see the difference. But again, this is $90 versus $40 for the DD. So maybe having a long cord isn't such a terrible thing cost wise. Alrighty, let's talk about the battery life of this kit. So this kit is going to net you essentially over 14 hours of battery life. Now that is not continuous usage, meaning this is not going to last me 14 straight hours. Essentially what it means is if you use these transmitters and receiver in conjunction with the charging case, you will have over 15 hours of battery life or over 14 hours of battery life. It's somewhere in that ballpark because essentially, each transmitter can last you up to five and a half hours while the receiver can last you five hours. This charging case will allow you to essentially charge these units one full time and then almost a full time at 0.8 on the second charge. So you can charge these 1.8 times, essentially giving you that 14 hours of usage. Now I will say in the 10 months that I have used these wireless mics, I have not had an issue where I killed them or drained them completely down to zero. I took these mics with me to CES and I firmly expected, because I was gonna constantly be keeping them in my little mic adapter, I had this mic adapter and what I was doing was, I was doing interviews with people and I would put the mic inside of here and then I would put this little wind foam on top of the mic um, sort of like this and I would walk up to people and I was doing interviews and basically the mic lived inside of this the entire time I was there. I actually never turned it off and I still had a little bit over, I would say a little bit over half. The receiver I was turning off in between shoots, but the mic I was not, just because I didn't want to take the wind foam off and then turn it back on or forget to turn it on. So anyways, I managed to get about a full day's worth of usage out of one receiver or one, one transmitter, I should say. And the nice thing about doing interviews in something like this is if this transmitter dies, I can easily take the other one out and pop that in. So that is a nicety about this kit. So, But this is how I ended up doing the interviews at CES, and I think it worked fantastic. Um, by the way, I'll have a link in the description for this um, 
this 3D print, we ended up making something a little bit more complete, something a little bit uh, more stylish. So if you're interested in that, there will be a link in the description below of uh, this video for that uh, 3D print. Also, a couple of things I do wanna mention, some uh, things that I haven't used is the fact that this kit does come with uh, some attachments so you can connect to your cell phone. You have this little handy lightning adapter and then you can just take the hot shoe piece out and then connect. You can basically connect in your lightning port adapter. So it goes in something like this and then you can plug it into the bottom of your cell phone like so and then you can connect your mic. So if you're gonna do a video where you're recording, you can have it connected to your cell phone and then you can receive audio directly through the mics into this adapter into your cell phone video. So I think that's pretty cool. It's something I haven't seen done at, at all on, on many kits include a lightning adapter. It's a really nice touch. They also have one for the uh, action cameras. So if you're using any sort of DJI action, uh, GoPro, whatever it may be, you do have a USB-C adapter so you can funnel audio, clean audio into uh, one of those devices. All right, so all of that's well and good, but how does the mics actually sound? And what are some audio editing recommendations you can make? All right, let's jump into that test right now. All right, so now you're hearing the audio directly from the DJI mic. I'm using the magnet that comes with the mic and I have it attached to the inside of my sweater. Now, how does the audio sound? Does the audio sound clean? Does it sound clear? Personally, I think these mics sound pretty excellent for internal audio. Now, obviously for filming YouTube videos or just doing casual vlogs, this is not a big deal to have the microphone where you can physically see it. However, when you are doing something a little bit more professional, you wanna be a little bit more stealthy. You wanna have the microphone where it's not in frame. And to be able to do that, you're probably going to need some form of lavalier mic. Now, I also have a lavalier mic connected underneath here. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect this mic from here. We're gonna connect it up to the lav mic and then you can hear the audio and see if there's a major difference between the internal mic or using a lavalier mic. Alrighty, so now we're doing an audio test using the Rode Lab. And the Rode Lab is actually positioned right here on me. I'll see if I can pull focus to that. So it's not too far from my mouth. I would say it's slightly closer than having the mic mounted somewhere on me. But when you are working with talent and you're doing something professional, Having a discreet mic is an absolute must because sometimes if you have the mic mounted on you, it could be a little bit distracting. So having the mic in a position like this could make it a little bit less noticeable. And the nice thing about this is, is you can move about freely with lavalier mics and you don't have to worry about the audio changing as opposed to if I use my shotgun mic, if I get off access of the mic, you're not gonna have the same audio uh, reception as you would if you were directly in front of it or underneath it. So that's one of the nice things about the lav mic. Let me know what you think about this audio. I've not been a fan of the Rode mic. I still feel like the DD mic does a better job, but I also feel like the internal mic on the DJI mic kit is equally as good. What do you think about this audio? All right, so I just wanted to go ahead and throw this one into the mix. This is a test that I haven't seen a lot of people do. Of course, they've held the mic, but if you're doing interviews, you don't wanna put a tiny little microphone in somebody's face. So having something like this, a little handheld device, is a little bit more professional. Like I said, when I was on the CES show floor, this is how I was doing interviews with people and what I was really pleasantly surprised about was how well that this microphone rejected background noise or other voices on loudspeakers. If you've ever been to CES or any trade show, you'll know that there's a lot of things happening in the background. It is not the best environment for audio, but I think this mic specifically did really well on the show floor and just using a little handheld handle like this, I think it worked really well and made it very convenient where I didn't have to mic people up and I could just hand them a mic and let them talk about their product 
and move on to the next booth. So what do you think of the audio using the handheld piece? Personally, I think this sounds the best out of them all, but it should because it's the most directional form of audio uh, capture. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, so I do want to add one more test to the mix before we close this video out. And I wanted to talk about the range. The range of these mics are 250 meters or 850 feet. Now, in my testing, I found that they did pretty darn excellent at a distance. And I actually was out at the park filming a video for another product, and I just decided to have Nick let me know when the audio started breaking up. And I would say that it was pretty, pretty close to that 250 meter mark. It was only when I started going behind a tree that I started noticing audio distortion. So have a listen. All right, so I want to do a really quick range test with the wireless mic. Now, the range of the mic and receiver, the transmitter to the receiver, is 250 meters, which is essentially 850 feet. Now, I'm just going to essentially walk down to the end over here, and uh, we'll just see how far we can go before it starts cutting out. Uh, Nick is standing behind me holding the camera, so he can see the audio, and he can sort of see when it's dropping out. He's listening for it. Um, how's the signal looking, Nick? I'm getting the thumbs up, so obviously that's working pretty good. Um, and as you can hear, <laughs> the uh, sand cranes are making noise, so maybe that is abundantly present in this audio, but usually this does a really good job of rejecting the audio. So now I'm pretty far from Nick right now. Now there's nothing obstructing me. Now this is 250 meters unobstructed and 850 feet unobstructed obviously so let's see what happens if I get back here I'm turning myself how we looking Nick signal still looking pretty good I'm still getting a thumbs up it says it's sounding good so again there's nothing here I'm just going to walk back here and I'm going to move behind this tree we'll see if it uh, sounds any different how we looking Nick we're still pretty far I'm far um, how's it looking Nick Still getting the thumbs up, so I just went behind that tree. So you can see the range is actually really excellent. And one of the things I love about this mic is just how consistent this range actually is, which gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom if you are going to film and you're filming with like multiple people. So overall, I will say I would never ever record at that far of a distance. Like there would never ever be a need for me to record that, like to be that far from my camera or my, my camera person. Like it's just not something that I would necessarily need, but it is nice to know that you do have that flexibility if you do need that type of distance. Like I said, personally, I don't need that type of distance, but it's there if you needed it and the penetration of these mics behind objects is actually the best of any mic that's on the market today, if you ask me. And I'm, I'm not trying to be biased towards anything, but it's just, like I said, I took a gamble on these mics because there was little known. DJI isn't an audio company, but what they do do better than anybody else is create very solid, very intuitive transmission systems that just work and that's what I can definitely say about these is that they just work 10 months later after the firmware updates I think that these mics are probably the best value right now and it's one of the tech purchases that I made in 2022 that I least regret a lot of times you buy something you're like crap I don't really know if I need that I never actually felt that way about these now with that being said, after you capture your audio, you should be doing some sort of post processing, whether you use Reaper, whether you use some sort of other audio platform for, for Final Cut. I use Adobe Audition and some of the simple things that I do is typically when I ingest that audio, I will check to see if I need to normalize the audio. If I don't need to normalize the audio, I will simply look to see if I can do any form of noise reduction. You do have to be careful when you're dealing with noise reduction. If you're in a loud environment, noise reduction may not be the best fit for a lav style mic because you can actually do more damage to the vocals by doing noise reduction. If it doesn't need any noise reduction, I move into a single band compressor and I usually use a four to one single band compressor. 
using anything more of that than that it's going to compress the voice down too much and make it sort of very robotic it may give you a style that you like if you like that radio broadcaster style then you may want to use an eight to one compressor but i wouldn't recommend anything further than that after that i add a parametric equalizer and that's basically going to give me some nice even curves and I use a preset that uh, Adobe Audition already has it's called loudness maximizer and from there I just sort of fine tune how I want it to sound and the cool thing is you can play back your voice as you're changing the curves so you can hear what you like again the biggest thing about audio is it's got to appeal to you and everybody's voice is different so no configuration or editing is going to be one size fits all. After I add my equalizer, I go ahead and do a, uh, a hard limiter to negative six and I raise my audio level to six decibels. So basically the lowest points will be six decibels and the highest points will be negative six of my audio. And that just gives a nice consistent sound to the audio that you are listening to. And that's it. That's all I do to my lav audio and it's something super simple. And then there's some times where I'm just doing a quick vlog. I don't do anything to my audio at all. So it really just depends. But anyways, as you can see, I really like these mics. I think they are definitely worth the purchase in 2023. You're not gonna find anything else as simple, as intuitive, as clean, and as small as these mics. The only absolute gripes that I have is that there's not enough room in this little charging case to put the windscreens or the audio cable. You still need to use this little bag if you are gonna tote everything around. It's not a huge deal breaker, it's just me being nitpicky and if there's one more thing that I could wish for is the fact that we have this cool little hot shoe and they included these lightning cables and they included these uh, the USB-C port but what I would love to see is them be able to take advantage of this little active pin here and make a hot shoe that would work with different cameras like Sony Canon Panasonic to where we can just directly connect to the hot shoe and be able to get audio pass through without the need of an auxiliary cable like this. I think that would be the most complete thing and I would absolutely love to see it. And I think that DJI has positioned themselves to eventually, hopefully, be able to do that. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something about audio. Um, again, keep in mind that if you have bad audio in a video, you probably would turn the video off. So if you're still watching right now, it's because the audio is good, it doesn't have anything to do with the overall presentation. It's because the audio in this video was good. So keep that in mind when you are creating content for yourself. I'll see you in the next video. Stay original. Uh. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my successes only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money, the power, respect, and I heard you on so and so.